Good morning and welcome to Bishop's 188th Convocation Ceremony. This is an event to honor the accomplishments of all our graduating students. In just a few moments, our graduates will enter followed by the academic procession. Professional photographers will take each graduate's photo, photo as they are receiving their diploma. In order to ensure everyone's safety, we ask that you remain in your seats during the ceremony. Finally, as a mark of respect for our graduates and to enable everyone in the theater to enjoy the ceremony, you are asked to silence your cell phones. Bonjour et bienvenue à la 188e collation des grades de l'Université Bishops. Ceci est un événement pour célébrer la, les réalisations de tous nos finissants. Dans quelques instants, nos diplômés vont défiler dans le théâtre, suivis de la procession universitaire. Les photographes professionnels prendront des photos de chaque diplômé recevant leur diplôme. Pour assurer la sécurité de tous, nous vous demandons de rester à votre place pendant la cérémonie. Par courtoisie, envers les diplômés et les autres invités, nous vous demandons de fermer tous vos appareils de communication personnelle pendant la cérémonie. Thank you and enjoy the celebration. Merci et bonne célébration.
Merci à tous. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, unfortunately, we have, we're, expecting, we're experiencing a slight delay for the academic procession, so we're going to ask you to be a little bit patient, maybe a, a five minutes. Uh, désolé, uh, nous sommes en train, nous avons un petit contretemps avec la procession universitaire. Ça va, ça va prendre à peu près cinq minutes. Uh, nous sommes entièrement désolé, uh, mais ça va recommencer bientôt.
graduates, distinguished guests, members of faculty and staff. As we gather on this splendid day, we acknowledge that we come from different places, hold diverse values, and cherish unique beliefs. And yet today we are united in gratitude. At the start of this convocation, which is the last time that we'll all be together, I invite you to pause for a moment and express thanks for the gift of intellect, the goals you have accomplished, the support of family, friends, and mentors, and a society that encourages the pursuit of knowledge. In a world where many do not have access to higher education, we give thanks for the achievements, degrees, and honors that we celebrate today. Dans un monde dans lequel plusieurs ne détiennent pas de futur, nous sommes reconnaissants pour les rêves, les espoirs et les projets qui ont été présents ici à l'Université Bishops. Dans un monde dans lequel plusieurs n'ont pas de communauté, nous sommes reconnaissants pour le soutien de nos professeurs et les membres de staff, des membres de notre famille et nos amis. May we commit then to using this gratitude as inspiration to light the way from here so that we may imagine the unimaginable, face the unthinkable, and live with integrity and compassion towards others, especially those who suffer. As we go from this momentous day on different paths to different experiences and different destinies, May our gratitude unite us in the desire to use all that we are and all that we have for the common good, so that reasons to be thankful will fill every life. A new journey ahead beckons. As we go forward to embrace it, our years here at Bishops have taught us that it is the journey itself that brings joy. We offer our gratitude in the name of all that is sacred to each of us alone, and all that is holy to us together. May this gratitude grow into the freedom to live, work, and serve others all the days of our lives. May it be so.
your feet always be swift. May you have a strong foundation when the winds of changes shift. Welcome to the 2016 graduating class, their families, friends, and supporters. I now declare this convocation of Bishops University to be open. It's customary at these events for the Chancellor to say a few words which uh, at least he believes to be wise. Uh, but first I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our history. Our beautiful Bishops campus is located on the traditional territory of the Abenaki First Nation. As we begin this celebration of our graduating students, we, the Bishop's community, honor the Abenakis as the traditional stewards of the land on which we meet today. Uh, as for the words of advice, you're here to graduate and not for the advice, so I'll be brief. Uh, étant donné que c'est votre première expérience d'une collation des grades, euh, vous ne rendrez pas compte que je vais me répéter un peu dans mes conseils. Mais je vais effectivement me répéter parce que je vais vous donner les mêmes conseils que je vais donner à mes enfants quand ils avaient votre âge. When you completed high school, the pursuit of further education was probably the default option and the only choice that you had to make was where to do so. For many, if not most of you, you're now at a stage where there is no default option for what to do next, and the range of choices open to you is daunting. You spent three or four years, and indeed in some cases have lingered even longer on the Maswepi, <laughs> acquiring a liberal education, knowledge of a particular field of study, and being exposed to critical perspectives on your discipline. You've had the good fortune to study on a campus where the world literally meets. Half of Bishop students are from outside of Quebec, including about 250 international students from 40 countries. This experience will have exposed you to a wide range of perspectives, an essential ingredient for success in the 21st century. Your university years will have helped some of you form a clear idea of your life's calling, but I suspect that most of you don't yet know what it is I know that I didn't when I was at your stage. While no one can tell you what to do, I can offer some advice about how to think about the question. First, define success. Your bishop's experience will have given you opportunities to reflect on what success might look like. Everyone defines it differently and personally, but here's what has worked for me and the people I know who have been fortunate enough to find satisfaction in their work life. Find something to do which you feel passionate about, plays to your strengths, and associates you with colleagues and an organization with whom you share common values. It's impossible to know at this stage exactly what field of endeavor will meet that definition of success, but you shouldn't let this uncertainty impede progress towards that goal. The, things to, the thing to do is to make the best guess you can, choose from amongst the available options, and go for it. Your youth limits your range of experience, 
But your youth is also a huge asset because it means that you have a lot of time ahead of you to accumulate experience and let it inform your choices. So use your youth to advantage by trying things, assessing them against your definition of success, and you can, which you can expect to evolve. Some of you will be fortunate and find the right fit on the first try. But if you don't, try something else and keep on trying until you do. A couple of real life illustrations of how this can work in practice. A friend of mine when we were undergraduates worked at different things after graduating. In her late 20s, she decided based on that experience that she thought she would like to become a medical doctor. This meant going back to school and she fretted uh, that she would be much older than her classmates and wouldn't actually start to practice until she was in her mid-30s. Uh, she eventually realized that she would reach her mid-30s no matter what choice she made. <laughs> and that she would rather reach that advanced age, able to pursue a career that would give her satisfaction, than not do so uh, simply because she was making a late start. Uh, and she's had decades of job satisfaction out of that decision. In my own case, I started out studying engineering but realized late in the degree program that it wasn't for me. Uh, I finished the degree, I went to work in an unre unrelated field where I found I had my first exposure to lawyers. Based on that exposure, I decided the practice with, of law would suit me, and indeed it did. However, in the course of my practice, I became interested in business, and when I got the opportunity to go into business with people I liked and respected, I took it. The point of these stories is that feeling, the feeling of uncertainty about your life's work that many of you are experiencing is an age-old condition for which there is rarely a silver bullet or a single once-and-for-all solution. You need to pick a point to steer for, be proactive, and be prepared to make mid-course corrections until you find yourself doing something you feel passionate about with people you like and respect. Our, our hope is that your time at Bishops has contributed materially to preparing you for this journey. That your discussions and debates with your professors and peers have allowed you to reflect on what is important and where satisfaction may lie for you. That the experience of a liberal education in the classroom and, as importantly, outside the classroom has given you some tools which will help you to assess your progress towards your goals in life and make the adjustments that will inevitably be necessary over the course of a lifetime. Congratulations to all of you and to your family and friends who've supported you, and good luck on the next leg of your journey. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Professor Robert Brown so that the title of Professor Emeritus may be conferred upon him. I invite his colleague, Dr. Claire Grogan, to read the citation. <laughs> uh, it's my pleasure to present Robert Brown on behalf of the Department of Modern Languages and the Department of English. Robert joined Bishops in 1973 as a graduate student to undertake a Master in Arts. He came to us after a sojourn in Africa, and after two years completing coursework, he departed for Japan. While working as a Tesla instructor, teaching English as a second language, in Tokyo, he successfully completed his dissertation on Charles Dickens. On his return to Canada, he once again joined Bishops, but this time as a faculty member. In conjunction with Stephen Sheeran and Sandy Ward, Robert established the English as a Second Language program. In fact, he created and taught the first ever ESL course at Bishops in 1977 and went on to be the academic coordinator for the first English language summer school the following year. The summer school continues to be a great success to this day and has fostered enduring friendships between Robert and many of his students across the globe. Since those early days of Bishops, Robert has proven himself an invaluable member in both departments. His teaching has been recognized with a divisional award and also with a nomination for the William and Nancy Turner Teaching Award. 
I might add his courses have stretched well beyond Charles Dickens and the Victorian novel, as he has enthusiastically taught in many areas covered by the department. Robert is a great colleague who has always had the best interests of his students at heart. More recently, Robert has led our students, many of whom might be sitting here, through the compulsory poetry course, English 105, <laughs> pushing them to excel and going to great lengths to engage his class. It is perhaps fitting that I close with the opening line to an imitative poem by Lawrence Folangetti that perhaps perfectly sums up a career in academia. It begins, constantly risking absurdity. <laughs> the poem's structure mimics someone walking on a high wire trapeze, and Robert himself became notorious for walking on top of the desks as he recited the poem, constantly risking absurdity. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I present you my friend, colleague, part-time tightrope walker, Robert Brown, that he be made Professor Emeritus. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Professor Stephen Sheeran so that the title of Professor Emeritus may be conferred upon him. I would invite his colleague, Dr. Jordan Tronsgaard, to read the citation. We often speak with pride about excellence in undergraduate education at Bishop's University beginning with a learning environment in which professors and students work closely together. For such a model to be successful, professors must know their students, know their names, know their strengths and weaknesses, and care about their development as scholars, citizens, and human beings. Professor Stephen Sheeran of the English Language Studies section of the Modern Languages Department is one such educator, and today I have the pleasure of presenting him in this ceremony. After having taught writing and English as a second language at Champlain Regional College in the early 80s, Stephen joined Bishops in 1985, first as the coordinator and developer of curricula for the ESL program, and then as a contract faculty member in ESL before becoming a full-time member of the faculty in 1992. In addition to developing new instructional material for all levels of ESL, Stephen was instrumental in the establishment of new ESL and other programs such as the English language studies concentration of the modern languages major. Over the course of his career, Stephen became a fount of knowledge for all things bishops. He knew the academic calendar better than anyone. He knew the collective bargaining agreements better than anyone. <laughs> he was the go-to for institutional information. When I was first hired as a professor in the modern languages department, um, one of my contact people for sorting out the logistics of my employment was Stephen not because he was the chair of the department at that point, um, but because he was the one everyone turned to. If you had a question, he had the answer. Of course, he did have many official administrative responsibilities throughout his career too, including multiple terms as the chair of the modern languages department, the often pro bono leadership of the English language summer school program, and between 2003 and 2007, he was the dean of the division of humanities. Stephen's willingness to go beyond what was required of him in the service of his students and colleagues was exemplified for me in the years immediately preceding his retirement when he assumed the duties as coordinator of a team taught course, pro bono, all while being chair of the department. The students too noted Stephen's dedication. I'll give one example of a graduate from a couple of years ago who told me that she came to Bishops because Stephen spoke to her on the phone personally um, about the program options for her and gave her information when she was deciding where to study. She stayed at Bishops because of his help as an academic advisor and became a proud ambassador for our department and later alumna for the university because of her experience. In addition to his accomplishments as a professor of English language studies, Stephen is an avid musician, a cycling enthusiast, a lover of Irish literature, and perhaps least of all, although not insignificantly, he could fix the photocopy machine. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Professor Stephen Sheeran, that he be made Professor Emeritus.
Mr. Brian Levit, Levit, Chancellor, Mr. Michael Goldblum, Principal and Vice Chancellor, Monsieur Xavier Dolan, graduates of the class of 2016, friends of Bishop's University. It is an honor for me to be here today to present before you one of the great ladies of Quebec politics, Madame Monique Gagnon-Tremblay. Not only did Madame Monique Gagnon-Tremblay leave a deep and lasting mark on our region, but she also helped all of Quebec shine bright on the international stage. Notary by trade, Madame Gagnon-Tremblay has always been very involved in her community. After serving for several years as a town councillor for Ascot Corner, she was elected as the Liberal member of the, national, the Quebec National Assembly for the Saint-François riding. She earned the trust of her constituents who re-elected her six times. An incredible feat. Au cours de sa carrière, Monique Gagnon-Tremblay a occupé plusieurs postes ministériels, dont la présidence du Conseil du Trésor, la condition féminine, les communautés culturelles et l'immigration, de même que les relations internationales et la francophonie. Elle a aussi agi comme vice-première ministre et elle peut dire avec fierté avoir été la première femme à occuper le poste de ministre des Finances et celui de chef de l'opposition officielle. Désireuse de contribuer de manière significative à la société, Mme Gagnon-Tremblay a signé plusieurs ententes historiques. On ne peut passer sous silence l'entente Canada-Québec relative à l'immigration et à l'admission temporaire des Aubins, l'entente Gagnon-Tremblay-McDougall, la loi sur le patrimoine familial et l'entente concernant la place du Québec à l'UNESCO. En reconnaissance de ses contributions à la francophonie, elle est faite chevalier de l'Ordre de la Pléiade en 2003. As the member of National Assembly of Fort Saint-François and minister responsible for the Estri region, she accomplished great things and contributed to the vitality and dynamism of our community. Thanks to her perseverance and pragmatism, we were able to benefit from major investments right here in our region. Moreover, as an ardent defender of the interests of our educational institutions, Madame Gagnon Tremblay made sure that Bishops, such a unique university, was given due recognition and attention. Look no further than the magnificent John H. Price Sports Center to see the evidence. For many years, I followed and admired Madame Gagnon Tremblay's professional path. However, more than anything else, it was the women committed to our community and proud of her roots that left an impression on me. And I am convinced that she is a model for many others who see in her the proof that when driven by passion and determination, we can truly make a difference. She is a true pioneer who prepared a path for women like me who have chosen to use politics as a vector for change. Pendant plus de 27 ans, elle a mis toute son énergie à servir les citoyens, sans compter les heures. Femme de tête, mais aussi de cœur, elle était reconnue pour être à l'écoute des gens et sensible à leurs besoins. Les dossiers qu'elle a défendus avec acharnement et les valeurs qui l'animent lui ont permis d'améliorer le quotidien de milliers de personnes. Et nous en profitons encore aujourd'hui. Madame Monique Gagnon-Tremblay est un modèle de politicienne engagée, de députée dévouée et de ministre au curriculum impressionnant. Elle laisse à notre région un leg précieux et pour cela, elle mérite toute notre gratitude. Merci, Madame Gagnon-Tremblay. Michael, va te mettre euh, le... Mr. Chancellor. Mr. Chancellor, uh, I present après, to you for the degree of Doctor of Civil Law, Honoris Causa, Madame Monique Gagnon-Tremblay.
Yeah, I know I'm going to read. Domine spectatissime, auctorite mihi commissa, admito te ad gradum doctoris in juris civili in nostra universitate honoris causa. Vous procédez à la lecture. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. Principal and Vice Chancellor, honored guests, members of the faculty, students, friends, and families, chers amis. D'entrée de jeu, vous me permettrez de vous féliciter pour l'obtention de votre diplôme, un très grand accomplissement dans une vie. First, allow me to congratulate each and every one of you on the completion of your degree. It is a huge accomplishment in one's life. By awarding me this honorary doctorate, you bestow a very great honor upon me today. I accept it with great humility, and I thank you warmly for it. After finishing high school and completing secretarial studies, after a return to university, to earn a Bachelor of Arts and a law degree, a notarial law degree, after teaching to four-year notarial law students for several years, and being engaged in politics, in politics for 27 years, the doctorate you're awarding me today is the crowning moment for me of an active professional life filled with joy and happiness. For you, dear students, this Convocation Day will be engraved in your memories forever. It is a culmination of several years of sustained effort, sacrifices, and commitment, but also of success. In recent years, you have chosen the Eastern Townships as a place to study and live. This is an outstanding region which has a unique potential and a rare academic setting in North America. Two university campuses, a university health center, highly innovative companies, and a proximity to the United States market. Here you met friends, mentors, people who inspire you. Bishop's University will always be your alma mater. I always believe in the potential of this great institution, Bishop University, and ensure it outreach here and abroad. During my travels as Quebec's Minister of International Relations and Minister responsible for la Francophonie, I made it my job to praise both universities located in Sherbrooke and always stress how fortunate our region was to have a French-speaking university as well as an English-speaking one. Over the years, my duties allowed me to support development projects and initiatives tailored for Bishop's University among other things, by granting funds to help improve infrastructure, such as the Centennial Theater, the library, and the sports center. I remember very well the day the grant for the construction of the sports center was announced. I had the privilege of receiving a Gator's purple sweater <laughs> bearing number one. <laughs> and during my political career, I met four different principals of this university. Hugh Scott, Jeanne Nader, Ronald Poupard, and last but not least, Michael Goldblum, who is doing a terrific job 
despite a difficult budgetary context for all public organizations. Bishop's University, known for its higher learning, its human scale campus, and the enchanting site on which it is located, allows numerous English-speaking and French-speaking students from other Canadian provinces or abroad to pursue their studies in both official languages and to create a bright future for themselves. Today, I would like to salute the professors who contributed to your development and success. These are men and women of outstanding talent, expertise, and generosity. Some may have become models for you. Others, a source of inspiration or a reference. Through your studies and your actions while attending university, you are not able to make changes in society and face everyday challenges. The course mapped out for you prepare you for a profession or entrepreneurship that will bring you success. Make it the most. If for some, those words are simply a pious hope, I'm convinced that for a majority of you, they will be a source of inspiration. Quebec's mistakes nowadays is to consider the norm as established, habits as references and media coverage as a risk. I sincerely wish that you continue to surpass yourself always, that your resourcefulness prevails over cynicism and that you make Quebec your Quebec, the place where you achieve success. Failure should not be part of your vocabulary. You will make mistakes, but they must be seen as opportunities to move forward in life. Make sure to help and continue to the advancement of causes that matter to you and for which your involvement can make a difference. Do not seek out on your public exposure but see your involvement as an opportunity to distinguish yourself on a personal level and to get satisfaction that nobody will be able to take away from you. Throughout my career, I always felt that satisfaction. Today is a very important step in, in your life and a highly emotional day. Enjoy this day with your family and friends and show them how proud you are. They, in turn, will know how to recognize your achievements and your perseverance. This latter value always guided my career. Those who led the way did it modestly, humbly, and silently. History is written through great achievements. Never underestimate what you can bring to society. That said, an influential person once said to me, succeeding is not the most important thing on life, in life. Now it is my turn to wish you with all my heart to succeed in living your life. Once again, I thank you for the honor you have bestowed upon me today. Merci de cet honneur que vous me faites aujourd'hui. Je vous souhaite une excellente journée.
Mr. Chancellor, Principal Goldblum, graduates of 2016, your family and friends, members of the convocation. Today we honor a unique Quebecois actor, director, screenwriter, producer, and political activist. I say unique because once in a while, but rarely, a young artist bursts onto the scene whose knowledge of the craft of filmmaking and insight into the human condition belie his youth. Think of Orson Welles, François Truffaut, Steven Spielberg, all film, actors, film directors who significantly impacted the world of cinema before their 30th birthdays. Xavier Dolan appartient sans aucun doute à l'élite du monde cinématographique. Il est jeune, 27 ans. Yes, I said 27 years old. Et tout à son honneur, ses œuvres sont déjà inscrites dans les annales internationales du cinéma au même titre que les cinéastes prodigieux comme Wells, Truffaut et Spielberg. His film, J'ai tué ma mère, ou oh, I killed my mother, which Mr. Dolan wrote, <laughs> directed, and starred at the age of 20, was the first of six full-length motion pictures that he has created to date. His fifth film, Mommy, a harrowing journey into the relationship between a single mother and her ADHD, often violent son, shared Le Prix du Jury in the 2014 Cannes Festival. He shared this award with the legendary Jean-Luc Godard for his film entitled Adieu au Langage. That film, Mommy, went on to win the Caesar Award for Best Foreign Film in 2015. Également en 2015, les organisateurs du Festival international du film de Cannes ont invité M. Dolan à siéger comme membre du jury du concours principal du, du festival, c'est-à-dire les longs métrages en compétition. Il était en compagnie de juges qu'on connaît très bien, très prestigieux, des gens comme les frères Cohen, Jake Gyllenhaal, Guillermo del Toro. L'invitation à participer à ce jury reflète le respect indéfectible que lui témoigne la communauté cinématographique internationale. 2015 also saw Mr. Dolan showcase his filmmaking talents in another genre. Contacted by the team of Adele, he signed on to create and direct a video for the lead single of her new studio album. Of course, we know that that single is Hello. So I suspect that many of you here today may not have seen a feature film by Xavier Dolan, but I venture to say that most of you have at least heard and probably watched and Hello more than once. At last count, Hello had been, viewed by over, had been viewed over a billion and a half times on YouTube. And if you were at... <laughs> and if you were at last night's Chancellor's Dinner, you would have heard our very own Dr. Jen Shanka uh, do a beautiful rendition. Le point culminant de la carrière de Xavier Dolan a été sans doute la reconnaissance qu'il a reçue il y a deux semaines à peine au Festival de Cannes. His latest film, Juste la fin du monde, It's the end of the world, starring Academy Award winner Marion Cotillard, was awarded Le Grand Prix du Festival, the festival's second most important prize. The enormity of this achievement at 27 speaks for itself. Mr. Dolan's next feature film, which he's working very hard in production right now, will be in English, The Death and Life of John F. Donovan, 
The film will star Kit Harrington, Jessica Chastain, and Natalie Portman. Once again, he's breaking new ground. So to all the graduates assembled here for this year's convocation, I ask you to take note of this moment. Because at some point in the not so distant future, I predict, when you're watching the Academy Awards and the Oscar for Best Director is handed out, you may well be able to turn to the person next to you and say, hey, I graduated with him at Uni Bishop's University. <laughs> J'ai gradué avec lui. In fact, today, Bishop's University sets, um, becomes the first university in the world, as far as I know, to recognize with an honorary doctorate the rare talent and exceptional achievements de ce jeune Québécois. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you for the degree of Doctor of Civil Law, honoris causa, actor, director, screenwriter, producer, and political activist, Monsieur Xavier Dolan. Autoritate mihi commissa admito te ad gradum doctoris in juris civili in nostra universitate honoris causa. Is this how it should yeah, that's perfect. Okay. perfect. Yeah. So you can go up and speak now. Okay. Sorry, I must have this water. <laughs> Sorry, very inelegant, but I was so thirsty. Um, uh, graduates, uh, Chancellor Levitt, uh, Principal and Vice Chancellor Goldblum, um, <laughs> distinguished guests. Um, because I am a dropout, it's true. Because I'm a dropout, I must admit I always thought the chances I would one day stand in, on a stage in one of these robes were rather thin. <laughs> Lucky me. <laughs> Life found a way to make me wear it. Thank you so much for having me today and for bestowing this great honor upon me, an honor I must admit I couldn't possibly imagine I would receive in this lifetime. I've imagined many improbable things these past years, but not this. I left Sejep uh, slamming the door, g gently, <laughs> because uh, I didn't feel it was my place. I didn't feel in my place. I was never very studious or hardworking. <laughs> well, no, I mean, <laughs> I felt very passionate about a couple S's in English or in French, but I was very bad in math and, and uh, <laughs> all the rest. <laughs> uh, homework, uh, research, never got the attention and the rigor they deserved from me. Since the age of 11, 12, 13, I was always more interested by whichever short story, novel, or script I never finished but felt the urge to write then. I remember my mother, I can still hear her screaming from the bottom of the stairs telling me to come eat my dinner and put my goddamn computer away. <laughs> um, I have no real speech or lesson or counsel to give, of course. I am before you um, very intimidated I've always felt a sort of coyness and shyness to its students, I must admit, since I've given up on my own education. Um, I always fear 
um, recently that I won't be cultured enough or relevant enough for one specific conversation and sometimes I just shut up and let other people talk and wonder what would my life be like had I followed the path every other children followed and follows still? And naturally, I don't have the answer to that question. Um, tel est mon destin, je vais mon chemin. Uh, were the words Goldman wrote for Céline Dion in one of her songs, and of course I had to quote her. Um, <laughs> we're very proud of her. Uh, <laughs> Such is my fate. I go my own way. Doesn't translate very well, but that's basically what it meant. It feels very strange to stand here today in front of you and feel so vulnerable, and perhaps with this ham-fisted um, speech, um, I wish I, I, wish, um, I could uh, um, Im impress you and, 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 and leave a mark. Um, I wish you would uh, remember this moment. You probably will, though, <laughs> without me. <laughs> but it seems to me that it is um, unfathomable and not even decent to, uh, of course, uh, be patronizing or, <laughs> um, I must admit, I, I feel uh, very young and confused and lost very often. I live with following my instinct, um, sometimes in the dark, sometimes in the light. But like you, I just walk the line. I have my limits, my anxieties, and my sorrows. Uh, I wish I w could be sharing right now thousands of, of words and quotes from brilliant writers and, and, and songwriters and poets, but of course these, these quotes uh, are not always interpreted well and they, they can sound awfully pretentious or, or anyway, and then the essential is lost. Um, I realize that I only have my life, this short life, short career, um, to speak to you and be honest with you. When I gave up on my studies, um, studies you've brilliant, you brilliantly pursued, and congratulations to all of you, um, pursued with intelligence and devotion, uh, I found myself for two years um, living a life with um, not a lot of friendship, with no uh, job, and no achievements or feeling of achievement whatsoever. I wasn't particularly comfortable and rich. Uh, and my older friends were working on sets and my younger friends were in school. Uh, I mean, I felt free, but I felt very lost. Um, it is then that I decided to write a killed my mother naturally <laughs> uh, almost in one draft one evening it was like a <laughs> um, I was convinced that the, the script was honest and that people would be pleased with it um, but receptionists uh, wouldn't look at me in waiting rooms um, producers would uh, mock me and mock my story. People would uh, quote me André Gide and uh, all sorts of, uh, you know, would pontificate and tell me to go back to school or just go home. I didn't understand how irritating I was <laughs> for these people. Uh, in my own head, I was just a post adolescent teenager, young man with a 90 page long script and a title I thought was good. <laughs> um, the road to shooting this film and the road to here um, has been long. And back then, all of my attempts at, I just want to tell you that I'm translating this from French at the moment, which is why it's so long. <laughs> uh, just to be clear, that's what's going on right now. Um, <laughs> Back then, uh, all my attempts to finance the film and shoot the film um, 
uh, failed, which is when I decided to produce it myself with savings I had from child acting gigs. Um, and ever since, uh, the stories and the scripts and the travels and the encounters, the opportunities um, have been multiplying and um, today still, um, I'm going to read this in French. Encore aujourd'hui, quels que soient les honneurs, Cannes ou ceci, une partie de moi crée encore le rire d'un producteur ou le regard hautain d'une réceptionniste, les moqueries paternalistes de détracteurs et le rejet des autres. Mais la vérité, et c'est la seule chose que je puisse vous dire aujourd'hui, c'est que je mesure aujourd'hui à travers les témoignages, les échanges, les lettres que je reçois, ce que le geste simple mais déterminant de prendre sa place peut inspirer chez les autres. Vous êtes au moment charnière où l'imaginaire s'inscrit désormais dans la réalité et se pose dans la vie avec peu de possibilités de retour ou presque. Les années de spéculation, de rêve, de visualisation sont remplacées par le réel. Dans cette vie, une place créée pour nous exactement pour nous, à notre nom, comme nous l'avions imaginé, ne nous attend jamais. Cette place, on la crée. Enseignant, médecin, docteur, comptable, juge, technicien, sculpteur, la seule place qui soit la nôtre, c'est celle que l'on prend par le courage aveuglé d'espoir. Il faut le faire jeune parce que plus vieux, on a souvent l'humilité de croire qu'on a raté notre chance. Aujourd'hui et maintenant, nous portons en nous tous les changements que le monde exige. Et chaque individu porte en lui la singularité requise pour marquer son époque. Je suis honoré d'être devant vous et de penser que nous avons, malgré la différence de nos parcours, les mêmes choix qui nous attendent. Prendre place à notre façon, sans, compr sans compromis, dans la vie qui n'attend que nous. Thank you. I now invite the members of the graduating class who are receiving the degree of Bachelor of Arts to please stand. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, and all members of the university, with the unanimous approval of the convocation, I present to you these candidates in order that they be promoted to the degree of Bachelor of Arts. By the power vested in me, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts in our university, together with its responsibilities, rights, and privileges. Ariane Ashanoff Foss. <clears throat> Sarah
Sarah Bélanger with distinction. Ellen Black with distinction, the Stanmill, the Stanmill Prize for Excellence in Writing. Megan Butowski with distinction, the University Prize in Music. Evan Buck with distinction. Lauren Burns. Madeline Carres with distinction. Erin Cavalin with distinction. Michael Chapu Mekandi. Cormac Eby with distinction. Ariane Fecto with distinction. Glenn Wickens Prize in Film Studies. Laura Alessandrini with distinction, David Rittenhouse Prize in Drama. <laughs> Daniel Gans. <laughs> Matthew Beaver with distinction. Patrick Grogan. <laughs> David Guignon with distinction. Tirza Harris. <laughs> Stephanie Janeiro with distinction, the University Prize in Liberal Arts, the Wanda Rosenska Prize in Fine Arts. Megan Johnson. <laughs> Julia Blunden. <laughs> Emily Knight with distinction. Gabriel Cahuenga, the W.H. King Memorial Prize in Religion. <laughs> Daniel Laschiazza, with distinction. Zachary Lapointe. <laughs> Lapointe. 
Viviane Leblanc, with distinction. Thank you. Emily Litt. Hope Manning. Derek Masters with distinction. Aislinn May. Jeffrey Mugens. Thomas Mangi, with distinction, the George Engelbretson Prize in Philosophy, the University Prize in Philosophy. Rosemary Moore. Megan Mosher. Sarah Parker, with distinction, the Mackey Prize in English. Edith Poulin. The F. E. Meredith Memorial Prize in English. <laughs> Melina Carell, with distinction. <laughs> Kristen Robinson. Jennifer Selman. Nathan Smith, with distinction. Samantha Stewart, with distinction. Nicholas Walling, with distinction. <laughs> Francis Alvo, with distinction. <laughs> Yvon Baudin. James Bernard. <laughs> Mathilde Bizimana Paris, with distinction. <laughs> Christy Bacchus, with distinction the James Faraby Memorial Prize in Journalism. <laughs> Jessica Buxar. <laughs> Sandra Chuka with distinction. The Roderick Taylor Memorial Prize in History. Pascal Couture Tremblay. <laughs> Tremblay. 
Brandon D. Norris, the Ambassador of Switzerland Prize in Italian, the University Prize in Modern Languages. Marlena D'Ambrosio. William de Saint Just Black, <laughs> Holly Dobb with distinction, <laughs> Valerie Droulet. Gabrielle Fauché. Tyler Ferguson. Caroline Gagnon. Camille Gauvin, Lavasseur with distinction. <laughs> Gareth Gibson. <laughs> Christina Golab with distinction. Jocelyn Grub, with distinction, the university, the university prize in sociology. Emily Hamel, with distinction. Samuel Harrison. Alexandra Haxam. Ron Lee David King Feline. Paula Laberry. Kathleen Lacoste. Anthony Laflamme. Kathleen Lafon with distinction. Guillaume Lamoth Racine. <laughs> Roxanne Léger Cardinal. <laughs> Haley Lewis, the Ambassador of Switzerland Prize in French. Ada Lowen Clark. <laughs> e. Luo. <laughs> e. 
Melissa McCubre with distinction. Marco Marinic with distinction. Hannah McLean with distinction. Carly Mieli. Natalie Mignot. Bronwyn O'Connor. Mary O'Neill. Sophia Rizzo. Alexander Roy with distinction. The, the Archdeacon F.G. Scott Prize in English, the Malcolm and Evelyn Doak Prize in History. Justin Royer Nimat with distinction. Elizabeth Sabian. <laughs> Emma Steers. Kendra Thompson. <laughs> Lorana Wood. <laughs> Nick Yasinski. Christine Ackley. Mike Andrews. Hélène Auger, with distinction. Sarah Binette, with distinction. Melanie Bluin with distinction. <laughs> Madeleine Bouchard with distinction. Emily Boardman with distinction. <laughs> Me 
Megan Boshi with distinction. Jordan Cardinal. Sarah Conway. Shane Crawford. Philippe Duval Holiday. Jason Earl with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Everett. <laughs> Timothy Favorite. Alexandra Fisher, with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Fobera, with distinction. <laughs> Geneviève Fugère, with distinction. Catherine Hadley with distinction. <laughs> Alexandria Kana. <laughs> Rachel Labonte with distinction, the Charles McBurney Prize in Practice Teaching. Congratulations. Irene LaRose. Eileen LaRose with distinction. Sarah Legg with distinction. Rebecca McMillan. Lindsay Mastine with distinction. Catherine McWabi with distinction. Victoria Miller with distinction. <laughs> Kistern Montgomery, congratulations. <laughs> Kathy Monroe with distinction. Kate Newhouse. <laughs> Emily Patwan with distinction. <laughs> Congrat Anna Patrick. Veronique Piatera, with distinction. <laughs> Jessica Redeker, with distinction. <laughs> Kali Smith.
Lisa Spilin. Frédéric Truchon. Jerry Second Tugas. Joanie Vien. Malcolm Westaver. Kelly White. Okay, hurry in. Thank you. Abby Whitaker. Emily Williams, with distinction, the Rachel Walkmall Prize. Anna Wisniewski, with distinction. <laughs> Erika Zucker, with distinction. The Chancellor Prize, the William Shuttle Prize for Academic Achievement. I now invite the members of the graduating class who are to receive a Bachelor of Science to please stand. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor and all members of the university, with the unanimous approval of this convocation, I present to you this woman, and this man, <laughs> in order that they may be granted the degree of Bachelor of Science. <laughs> By the power vested in me, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science in our university, together with its responsibilities, rights, and privileges. Erika Yuz Khan, with this section. Lynn Spears with distinction. Will the members of the graduating class who are to receive the degree of Bachelor of Education please stand? <laughs> Mr. Chancellor and all members of the university, with the unanimous approval of this convocation, I present to you these women and these men in order that they may be granted the degree of Bachelor of Education. By the power vested in me, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Education in our university, together with its, its responsibilities, rights, and privileges. Amy 
Andrea Allen. Geneviève Allen. Thank you. I made it and I have a job. Frédéric Blais. <laughs> Stéphanie Boyer. Audrey Anne de La Fontaine Neal. Alison Doherty. Courtney Douglas. <laughs> Jessica Dumas. Corey Dunn. Corey Dunn. <laughs> Sarah Etier. Carly Friendo Kumbo. Kim Godet. Jed Gauthier. Ashley Halbo. Victoria Hall. Christine Hoeverlink. Sarah Jacques. Cole Kelso. Michael Lavigne. Richard Lavoie. Nadia Lewis. <laughs> Matthew Nod Brown. <laughs> Angela Mallet. Valérie Mathieu Cardinal. Ryan Miller. Laurence Morin. Eric Paternoster. Emily Patterson. <laughs> Camille Provencher. <laughs> Julia Richardson. Robidou. Amanda Rose. Que 
Kathleen Wass. Hannah Simon. Jessica Stacy. Kelly Stoddard. Susan Tut. Kira Walsh. Andy Warner. Kathleen Wagner. You did it. <laughs> Joshua White. Sorry, I lost the card. <laughs> I now invite the members of the graduating class who are to receive the degree of Master of Education to please stand. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor and all members of the university, with the unanimous approval of the convocation, I present to you these candidates in order that they be granted the degree of Master of Education. By the power vested in me, I admit you to the degree of Master of Education in our university, together with its responsibilities, rights, and privileges. Anna Bernath. Catherine Standish. <laughs> Mark Walholtz. <laughs> Julie White. Twenty sixteen is the first year we're presenting a graduate certificate specializing in teaching Anglais intensif. I'd ask the students who are to receive this graduate certificate to please stand. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor and all members of the university, with the unanimous approval of the convocation. I present to you these candidates in order that they may receive their graduate certificates. By the power vested in me, I award you this graduate certificate together with its responsibilities, rights, and privileges. Sophie Bonneville.
Steven Gobbs. Gabriel Pirlet. Nathalie Toussillon. Mr. Chancellor, I now invite the valedictorian, Alexander Roy, to address the convocation. Wow. <laughs> uh, there are a lot more of you here than there are in my bathroom mirror. Welcome. I've been invited up here today to try to sum up what it means to be graduating from Bishop's University, to set us off on the right foot towards what we are told is a boundless future. Being that I'm several decades short of life experience, of any real wisdom, I'm gonna approach this the way that I approached my papers over the years, which is just put on a confident smile and kind of act like I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when I asked my high school guidance counselor, Mrs. Wallace, if she had any brochures for a place called Bishops University, she looked up at me, she tilted her head like this, and she asked, Bishops, where's that? I knew at that point that she had never truly lived, but it is a question. <laughs> <laughs> but that is a question I wish that I could answer again, because I would have a lot to say. For many of us here today, Bishops wasn't the obvious choice, but we made that choice nonetheless. Simply in choosing to come to Bishops, we already exhibited that critical gator quality of challenging the status quo, of committing to carve our own path through life instead of sleepily following the road signs. Three to four to, okay, maybe I've been here for five years later. And here we are to celebrate the coming of our next chapter. And I'd like to say that that one snuck up on us, but I've never known a bishop student to let the world pass them by without noticing. We, t we were told to cherish our university experience, to breathe every moment in deeply, and our mothers, fathers, and caregivers here today will be happy to hear that we finally listened. Well, sort of. We took an extra second or two to stare out onto the river as we walked to school, knowing that we learned just as much getting burnt in a bright orange Explorer 200 <laughs> as we did in the seats of BWH getting burnt by midterms. We slammed our palms against the plexiglass at basketball games, we lost our voices singing on the front porch of our principal's house, and we never took a warm smile on that bridge for granted. We stuffed experience into our time here like Halloween candy into a pillowcase, enthusiastically, until well past our bedtime, and with full knowledge that not all of it was abundantly healthy for us. <laughs> a fair share of tears are shed this weekend over having to leave, but you see, the beauty of what we've built here on the Massawippi shore is that when you find home in the people that you surround yourself with, you'll never truly have to leave. Whether we end up separated by thousands of miles or living right across the street from one another again, the profound and unique ways in which we've touched each, other, each, other, eh, each other's lives is portable. It can be picked up, slipped into your back pocket, and it can be carried with you wherever this life will take you. I swore a million times while singing our school song that I would never graduate which I suppose officially makes all BU graduates filthy lying hypocrites. <laughs> Seriously, don't hire any of us. <laughs> but what if never graduating means never letting the memory of what happened here and the lessons that we learned fade away? Left unnurtured, memory is left out in the sun to be picked apart by the unrepentant buzzards of time. Look back in gratitude instead, and not only will these memories stand the test of time, they will imbue you with a warmer hope for the future. With hope will come confidence, and with confidence will come the wisdom not to perpetuate our most damaging habit as young adults. No, Mom, it's not snap face, and it's not texter. It's our chronic dismissal of our own potential. 
We dismiss ourselves because, much like craft dinner and sriracha during exam season, it's easy. <laughs> but much like empty carbohydrates and modified milk ingredients, it's just not very good for our hearts. What I see in this room is a group of people, all of whom are capable of doing something tremendous and something meaningful, capable of pushing themselves to new heights and attaining even their loftiest goals, but many of whom doubt that I can, even as I stand here and I tell them the opposite. Our liberal education has empowered us with the curiosity and the wisdom to seek out what is meaningful to us. It has armed us with a level of critical thinking and boldness capable of accomplishing great things. Be daring, be yourself, and mighty forces will come to your aid. Choose to be ambitious. Choose to know that that constant thud of doubt and insecurity in your chest does not mean that you're better off not trying, but rather that you're aiming sufficiently high. Giraffes didn't grow necks six feet long by sitting back and declaring that the trees were simply too tall. And if they hadn't chased the trees skyward for seven million years, they'd still be some sort of strange looking and likely very hungry deer. It's giraffe metaphors. <laughs> We are defined by the fierceness with which we approach our goals and by the grace with which we acknowledge the inherent futility in expecting everything to go to plan. The ones who believe that they can predict the future picked up their finance degrees yesterday. <laughs> Some flat and tangible notion of the future did not begin when you were handed your degree. The future will move as you move in all of its gorgeous unpredictability. Every setback along our path is an opportunity for that familiar thud of doubt to knock a little louder, for it to hem you dutifully to an action out of fear of inadequacy. Give yourself every ounce of credit you deserve and respond instead with conviction and with tenacity. On the topic of the future, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge our education grads. I truly believe that you are answering to the highest calling. To coax curiosity, empathy, and ambition out of little potato sacks filled with hormones and crayons <laughs> is no small task, and it just so happens to be the most essential foundation of our society. In a global battle against apathy and ignorance, you as educators are on our front lines, and so I thank you. To our humanities graduates, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, but you too have something tremendous to offer the world. <laughs> the ability to parse through vast and complex issues and emerge with a critical understanding, to understand nuance, perspective, and the sheer interconnectedness of it all is rare, and in an increasingly complex world, something that will be greatly valued. You must challenge so many of those destructive isms that tear our world apart. We are defined finally, and perhaps more fundamentally, in the way that we treat others. Toxic greed continues to gut and claw at our planet's natural resources for profit as economic inequality holds so much of the world's potential down by the ankles. Fear and hatred erupt into violence daily, trying the tenuous threads of our humanity. Now, I'm not standing here asking you to commit your life's work to the attainment of world peace, but by all means. But true humanity is to act in kindness in the face of it all, to ask if, even in our own small way, we are making the world a better place. So when you leave here today, don't let some clumsy giraffe metaphor be what you take with you. As you walk back through those arches, you live your life as a celebration of that petrified teenage version of yourself that showed up here so many years ago. The you who left home wide-eyed and terrified and who, if we can stop being so humble for a second, has frankly been killing it ever since. <laughs> Check these things out. So when you feel scared or hopelessly uncertain, know that you've already done it before and that it got you right here today. The dirt under our fingernails from field day has long been washed away, but it left something in its place. A lesson of joy found in a little bit of madness. A memory of a time and a place in our lives when we chose to truly be present and to accept others as they are. Extend the compassion that was extended to you and continue to be understanding even as you are ambitious. Do this and you will be leading, loving, and making the lives of those you touch just that much better. And that's something that we learned when we walked through those arches. Thank you.
University. What a remarkable address. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> Um, so this is the part of our ceremony when we recognize the highest achievements of our graduating students. The Chancellor's Prize is awarded to a student of the graduating year for outstanding academic proficiency. It will be presented by Dr. Anthony Damasio of the School of Education, and this year's recipient is Erica Zucker. The Vice Chancellor's Prize is awarded for academic proficiency in the final year of an undergraduate course. The prize will be presented by Nadja Martel, Vice Chair of our Board of Governors, and this year's recipient is Thomas Mingi. Mr. Chancellor, Dr. Monique Gagnon-Tremblay, Dr. Xavier Dolan, <laughs> <laughs> sounds nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Members of the class of 2016, members of convocation, families and friends. Every year for 173 years, Bishops has celebrated this special day in the life of the university. The central role of the chancellor, the academic dress, the, the Latin citations, and the other formalities of the convocation proceedings remind us that the idea of the university as a community of learning date back, dates back to the Middle Ages and has endured throughout the centuries. Now, like all great institutions, Bishops has evolved over the decades as each generation has been charged with ensuring that the university meets the needs of its time. We can all take pride in knowing that although much has changed, Bishops continues to pursue its core mission of offering a sound and liberal education to undergraduate students. We remain focused on being an institution of choice for outstanding young people seeking academic excellence and a rich undergraduate experience. We strive to be a university that instills confidence, courage, and a sense of responsibility in its students, to be a place that nurtures personal and intellectual freedom, and fosters enduring friendships. We're proud that our graduate students consistently tell us that we've delivered on the promises that we made to them when they chose bishops. Over the past few months, several external assessments have confirmed that our students value highly their experience at Bishops. In the 2016 Maclean's rankings, our students placed Bishops first in Canada amongst the primary undergraduate universities for student satisfaction, the quality of our professors, and our residents living. Huffington Post ranked us first for extracurricular activities and first for sports and recreation. Both the Huffington Post and the University Hub ranked us first for preparing young entrepreneurs. And the National Survey of Student Engagement placed bishops in the top 10% of over 3,000 universities across North America for our supportive environment, the quality of our student-faculty interaction, the collaborative learning that occurs on our campus, and the high order of learning that we provide. So we've had a pretty good year. Hmm. 
Now, much of bishops endures over time, our heritage buildings, our bucolic campus, and most importantly, our focus on a liberal education for undergraduates. But it is also true that each generation of students reinvents the university. And the class of 2016 contributed to bishops being an intellectually vibrant, ambitious, and caring community. J'étais vivement impressionné par les efforts de nos finissants afin que les valeurs fondatrices de notre université soient transmises à la prochaine génération d'étudiants qui, à leur tour, sauront les adapter et les transmettre. Ils ont démontré aux étudiants qui les suivent que les valeurs fondamentales qui sont la curiosité, la rigueur, le respect d'autrui, l'intégrité et l'engagement sont des valeurs sûres et ce faisant, ils ont marqué de façon positive leur université. Et grâce à nos étudiants et toute notre communauté universitaire, je peux dire que Bishops a eu une année exceptionnelle. It was a year in which world events were felt very intensely on our campus. Early in November, Edward Snowden delivered a Donald lecture from Moscow. Although he only visited us virtually, his moral courage, commitment, and intelligence were evident to everyone in the standing room only audiences here in Centennial, in Bandine Hall, and to the 500 alumni who watched the conference online. Now, no matter what any of us may think about the legality or the morality of his actions, he did force us to think about the implications of the massive amount of data that governments are gathering about their citizens. Ten days after Snowden's talk, the terrorist attacks occurred in Paris. The attacks happened on a Friday night, and when Fiona and I got up on Saturday morning, we decided that we wanted to reach out to the French students on our campus. We sent an email to five students inviting them for dinner and encouraging them to share the invitation with their French classmates. Now, I'm not a great fan of social media, but it certainly did its job that day. Sixty students came to dinner at, <laughs> at the house that night. It was a special evening of solidarity and camaraderie. And then a few days later, the French police found three of the terrorists in an apartment in Paris. And I was left wondering if the police had located the terrorists by using some of the information gathering techniques that Edward Snowden had condemned. One of the great challenges that our graduates will face is to determine how best to reconcile privacy and security. You will need to consider the difference between privacy and anonymity and consider the risks and benefits of each. The world is, is a complex place, and it's important that we confront these questions, and the Donald Lecture Series helped us do that. Edward Snowden was followed by Naomi Klein, who delivered a powerful Donald Lecture soon after returning from the Climate Change Conference in Paris. And Omar Khadr's lawyer, Dennis Edney, talked to us about what had motivated him to represent Mr. Khadr. Mr. Edney spoke about the physical and emotional brutality that Mr. Cotter had faced in Guantanamo. He also spoke movingly of his faith in and gratitude for the Canadian justice system. Now, another way in which the world events impacted bishops this year was the Syrian refugee crisis. Every year, bishops and Champlain Regional College sponsor two refugee students. The university waives tuition for the first year and provides a room in, in residence. Our food service provider, Sodexo, provides a free meal plan. And a committee of volunteers engages in fundraising to support the refugee students. In face of the crisis in Syria, the university came together last fall and decided that it should sponsor an additional refugee. Ahmad joined us in January and has just completed his first semester studying computer science. We are very proud to have him as a member of our community. In 
You know, the world not only came to bishops this year, we went out to engage with it. A group of our students attended the Model United Nations in New York. Our delegation representing the United Arab Emirates won an Outstanding Delegation Award, and two students were recognized as outstanding delegates. And Stephanie Tavares, who will graduate this afternoon, is about to embark on an extraordinary journey of discovery as she aims to set a world record by visiting every country on earth over the next three years. How's that for Bishop's ambition? <laughs> now, each of us will have our own stories about what made this year unique. Let me share three of mine with you. So the first occurred during orientation week. There is a tradition that you heard already a bit about that the new students congregate late one night in front of the house on Harold Drive to wake the principal and sing the school song. I try to think of something original to, to say or do each year, and, and this year I had what I thought was a brilliant idea. <laughs> I filled a mug with beer so that I could raise it when the students sang the line, and you heard it, raise your beer mugs and your little brown jugs for Bishop's University. So there were about 400 students on the lawn that night, and it all pretty much went in pl as planned. The students were in, in great voice, and I, I raised my mug at the appropriate time. And then they finished singing, and everyone quieted down. And I was about to speak my words of wisdom, when from the back of the crowd I started to hear chug, <laughs> chug, <laughs> chug. <laughs> this chant gets louder and louder. <laughs> so suddenly I'm facing one of the great character tests of my time as principal. Like I instantly realized that I could either res resist the exhortations of the crowd and remain true to my message about the responsible consumption of alcohol, <laughs> or I could look like a nerd. <laughs> so I could, you know, ignore my own uh, admonition by downing the beer, and basically, as I saw it in that moment, my choice was essentially nerd or hypocrite. <laughs> so I chugged the beer. So, it just goes to show you that maturity and good judgment do not necessarily come with age, <laughs> and there are still life lessons to, to be learned when you're 63. Um, my second memorable moment occur occurred just a few weeks later. Uh, once every two years, our football team travels down to the Maritimes for a game. And this has traditionally required our team to leave by bus on Thursday returning overnight on Saturday, and they arrive back on campus on Sunday morning, having spent more than about 24 hours on the bus. This year, with the help of some donors, we decided to charter a plane. And it didn't actually cost us that much more because the team was able to leave on Friday, and that reduced you know, food and, and uh, hotel costs. And we also sold some tickets on the plane. So some very generous alumni decided to come along for the ride, and I decided to go along with them. So we had a very tough game against St. Mary's in Halifax, and we were trailing throughout the whole game, and then we came from behind at the very end in the dying minutes of the second half, touchdown pass, Bishop's wins, um, it was great. And then we all had dinner together just before we got on the plane, and I found myself at a table uh, with three of the players. One of them, Mathieu Demers, uh, was the quarterback. And Mathieu has come to Bishops from the Cégep de Limoulou in, in Quebec City. Bishops is his first experience studying in English. Seated with us was Trevon Mil uh, Millings um, from Montreal, who was also in his first year. Um, he came to us from Champlain. So Mathieu, the quarterback, um, tells me at one point, you know, Principal, that was the first touchdown pass I've ever thrown in university football. And then Trevon says, you know, that was the first touchdown I've ever caught in university football. And then they both said, actually, that was the first game we've ever won in university football. 
So we were all smiling and enjoying that. And then they brought tears to my eyes. They both said that they'd never been on an airplane before and that it had been the best weekend of their lives. And in that moment, it, it captured really the very best of bishops. I was just so pleased that our university, with the help of our donors and with our staff, was able to offer such an important life experience to two of our students. Now, Mathieu and Trevon may not go on to be professional football players, but I'm confident that we have helped them on their way to being constructive, confident, productive, and engaged citizens. Now, like my first story, my final story also entailed a potential for hypocrisy, but it has a somewhat happier ending. <laughs> One of the messages I give to all our new students during the first week on campus is that they should not be afraid to try new things while at Bishops. They should not let their insecurities impede them from doing things that take them out of their comfort zones. Now, that always made good sense to me when I said it, until Fanny Godette came to see me. She's the director of the University Singers, and she asked me to sing a solo line in the a concert this spring. So like, I desperately wanted to say no, but I knew it would be pretty hypocritical to refuse. And she only asked me to sing one line. It was a, a line in Pharrell Williams' song, Be Happy. <laughs> so she was nice enough to organize a private rehearsal in the, in the basement of Bandine. I was, I was dreadful. So at one point, Fanny says, uh, Principal, you should stop coming in on the downbeat. So I nodded knowingly. <laughs> I had no idea what she was talking about. <laughs> and then the night before the concert, I woke up in the middle of the night, panicked because I couldn't remember my one line. <laughs> and then on the afternoon of the concert, um, Fanny came up with this fiction that there was a rehearsal on the day of the, the concert because she wanted to make me do it one more time. So I could tell that she was really worried, which of course made me even more nervous. But anyway, somehow she got me through it, and now I think I want to join the University Singers. Let me just share a couple of other things about this year. We did host our fourth annual U4 weekend with delegations from our three sister universities in the Maritimes, Acadia, Mount Allison, and St. Francis Xavier. The de debating competition involved eight teams, so two from each of the four universities. And the two teams in the finals were both from bishops. So I know I shouldn't boast, but you can probably figure out who won the cup. So it was a year of achievement, but it was also a year of reflection. Across North America, post-secondary institutions have been increasingly focused on finding ways to support students' diverse needs, specifically addressing issues related to mental health, sexual safety, and gender equality. We were one of six universities to participate in an innovative national health initiative to encourage conversation on the hazardous relationship between young women and binge drinking. In March, we joined 15 universities, 18 student associations representing close to 185,000 students across Quebec in launching a campaign aimed at student awareness about sexual harassment, violence, and consent. Recently, we received a generous donation from one of our alumni which has allowed us to create a new student internship position dedicated to sexual health and safety and gender equality. We held our annual Mental Health and Wellness Week and continued our efforts to decrease the stigma related to mental illness and to raise the awareness about how to facilitate mental health. So the campus has been busy, but our community has also been active beyond the Bishop's Bubble. Our best program has enabled a new group of students to pursue their diverse and ambitious dreams. Here's a sample of what some of our students will be doing this summer. Presenting research at the Canadian Chemistry Conference in Halifax. Participating in an internship at l'Institut National du Sport du Québec. Volunteering with a Child's Right Initiative in Jamaica. Studying Jane Austen at King's College in London. 
attending Summer Institute in Education at, at UBC, participating in a curatorial internship in a gallery in Dawson City in the Yukon, and working as a research assistant to a veterinary epidemiologist in Calgary. It really is inspiring to see our students pursuing their dreams. Now we continue to pursue our capital campaign, the first that we've done in more than a decade, which will help preserve the bishops that we love, its small classes, its residential character, the access to professors, and the other life-changing experiences that make it so special. Now, as many of you are probably aware, Quebec universities are facing major financial challenges. We are a public university, and our finances are in large measure dependent on government. But private philanthropy has been and will continue to be a key factor in Bishop's capacity to achieve its ambitions. And we are well on our way to achieving our goals for our capital campaign. You know, we still refer to Abbott, Munster, and Keener residences as New Side. Well, they were actually built more than 50 years ago. They're not so new anymore. And last August, with the support of the capital campaign, we undertook the renovation of Abbott. I'm pleased to report that the project was completed on time and on budget. And in fact, if you see some large kind of athletic looking men on the campus these days, those, those are the Alouettes and many of them are staying in Abbott residence and so far the, the feedback's been very positive. So we're very pleased about that project. Another major objective of the campaign is to renovate the John Bassett Library. La bibliothèque est toujours la pierre angulaire de notre université là où on peut trouver des enseignements et générer et partager des idées. À une époque où l'acquisition des connaissances se fait à une vitesse sans précédent, nous devons adopter la bibliothèque, adapter pardon, la bibliothèque aux réalités du 21e siècle. Nous imaginons de nouveaux espaces et de nouvelles technologies qui aideront nos étudiants et nos étudiantes à accéder à l'information et à collaborer ensemble. Nous imaginons un corps professoral capable de poursuivre ses recherches et d'en diffuser leurs résultats efficacement. Nous imaginons enfin un lieu qui sera le cœur spirituel de notre campus. So we are enormously grateful to the class of 2016 for joining with the students from other classes in donating $1 million to this library project. One of the most powerful message of this gift is that our students have wanted to support future generations of Bishop students. In current parlance, you, you're paying it forward. Now, I know you won't be able to benefit from the renovated library, and we are extraordinarily indebted to you to providing the support for those students who will follow you. Individually and collectively, the class of 2016 consistently responded to the needs of people less fortunate than, than themselves here in Sherbrooke and around the world. Whether it was cystic fibrosis, ALS, disadvantaged children, or many other causes, our students have consistently given of their time and their energy and their resources to help others. Our students are concerned with making our world a better place. So we owe a debt of gratitude to the class of 2016 for how they have cared for each other and how they have cared for this institution and the world. And now I would like to ask the class of 2016 to rise together so that we can express our gratitude to them, not for what they have achieved individually, but for what they have contributed collectively to bishops. Thank you. <laughs> you know, as I look out on all of you, I'm, I am reminded, and, and Alex referred to, to it, I, to that 
late September night only a few years ago that many of you stood on the lawn in front of the principal's residence singing at the top of your lungs that you were conditioned to your fate, that you would never graduate, and that you would stay here forevermore. Well, fortunately, you were wrong about never graduating, but I suspect that you were right when you sang the line that college days will linger ever in our hearts. You will certainly linger in ours. Vous avez fait honneur à votre université, à vos familles, et surtout à vous-même. C'est donc avec une grande fierté, mêlée d'un peu de tristesse, que nous vous disons au revoir. You've done your university, your families, and yourselves proud. It, it is with a bitter, sweet feeling that we bid you adieu. We do so, however, with confidence that you leave here ready and determined to choose your own paths, to further the boundaries of knowledge, to care for our planet, and to do your part in the never-ending quest to advance peace, justice, equality, and prosperity in the world. Nous suivrons vos réalisations avec grand intérêt. It will be exciting to watch you. Congratulations for what you have achieved. Thank you for all you have contributed. So celebrate this weekend. I know you're good at that. <laughs> and then go out and use the knowledge and skills you acquired at Bishops to make the better world you believe in. Congratulations. I declare this convocation of Bishops University to be closed. I'd invite everyone to a reception in the Sports Center immediately uh, following the singing of the National Anthem. And after the singing of the anthem, uh, I'd like those present to remain, uh, retain their seats and remain seated until the academic procession and the graduating students have exited the hall. The National Anthem. Embrace and portez les pères. 